Originally, this was supposed to be a very different video, but let's start at the beginning. On July 21st of this year, YouTube and international programming superstar Sebastian Lake announced a competition of the most epic proportions. Today, I'm announcing a little coding challenge. Earlier, Sebastian had documented writing a chess AI from scratch in two detailed videos. Now he dared the programmers of all nations to try themselves. The main restriction being that each AI had to fit within 1024 tokens. A token is basically a single element of C-sharp code. As an example, this line consists of 11 tokens. So if we'd want to win this thing, we'd have to make every token count. My initial idea was to train a small neural network to be able to gauge how good a given chess position is. So I went ahead, simulated 2 million real chess games from the Lichess platform, extracted 5 million different positions, let the Stockfish AI score each position, loaded everything into Jupyter, trained what felt like 100 different networks, did a bunch of analysis to further optimize them, exported the results back into C-sharp, and finally added a small simple search algorithm to turn this into a fully functional chess AI. One main challenge in doing this was fitting the network within the 1024 token limit. Essentially, a neural network is just a bunch of floating point numbers. When hard coding these numbers, each takes a token. I had the idea of taking four such numbers and converting them into 16-bit half precision numbers. Then I could combine them into a single 64-bit number, saving three out of four tokens. Later at runtime, I'd extract the original numbers again using a bit of additional code. So here I had my little AI a compressed neural network plus a simple search. Next I had to find out somehow how good the AI was. I started by playing a match myself, which the AI promptly won, off to a good start. Next I wrote a small sparring AI, using just a few of the features Sebastian describes in his videos, and let them play. And? Well, my neural network AI was clearly able to beat its sparring partner on a good day. Unfortunately, overall it did lose around 58% of the games. This was against an AI that used only a few hundred tokens, with plenty of room for improvement. Not good. So this was the video I was originally going to make. A video about how to defy the odds and squeeze the surprisingly large neural network into 1024 tokens. Despite the number of people on the discussion saying this was not possible. And I did, it just didn't work as well as I'd hoped it would. So get on new people on the discussions. So yeah, this is not the AI I ended up submitting. Upon reflection, this kind of does make sense. See, there's a group of problems that neural networks have been able to solve with astonishing effectiveness. And that is problems that we do not have a solid analytical understanding of as humans, like interpreting handwriting, or understanding natural language, or drawing a picture of Darth Vader sharing a giant sundae with his dog. But they're hardly concise or efficient for problems that we do have a decent understanding of, like sorting numbers, or finding our way through a maze, or winning chess games. And yes, this is different when we talk about the very best of chess AIs. When we go past our human understanding of the game, neural networks actually do take it to the next level. But here, we talk about a bot that is both tiny in size and computational power. Within this setting, we do understand the problem well enough for a handcrafted solution being able to outplay a neural network with ease. At least that is what I think now. It'll be interesting to see if anyone does submit a machine learning based AI to the competition and how it fares. Contemplating my failure made me realize I'd focused on the wrong part of the challenge. The goal was to write a chess AI and 1024 tokens, and my entire focus had been on the first half, writing a great chess AI. But this is a solved problem, at the very least within the limits of this competition. People have done decades of research into how to write a chess AI. The way to win the competition is not by one-upping all of this past research. The way to win is to squeeze as much of the existing chess AI knowledge into 1024 tokens. No need to outthink them if you can outsqueeze them. So where can we get a bunch of chess AI knowledge in a short amount of time? A quick overview of the most efficient techniques in say, two chapters with a total runtime of just over one and a half hours. So yes, I did go and rewatch Sebastian's two videos and I borrowed a bunch of the features of Sebastian's AI. Here's a list of features I implemented. And now I won't go over them again, because my main contribution was in squeezing these features, not compiling the list or implementing them. So I'll talk about the squeezing. Feel free to check out Sebastian's videos for details on how they are implemented in the first place. After implementing a first unoptimized version of these features, it was time to copy everything into a single file. This way, I could check how many tokens I used. So where did we land? 3687. Oh boy. So we'd have to remove more than two thirds of our code just to be able to submit our bot. Maybe I'd overcommitted just a bit. Fortunately, there were a lot of low hanging fruits at this stage. 
For one, I'd written my bot to be somewhat modular, with different features to be turned on or off individually. So the first step was to hard code which features were enabled and which were not. This alone got us down to 3102. Another big opportunity for optimization are these score tables, which define how good or bad a given square is for, say, a pawn. And yes, these values are very much <coughs> inspired by the ones Sebastian uses. Each number in the table uses up one tokens, so that's literally hundreds of tokens across eight tables. To get a first idea on how to compress these tables drastically, let's take a look at this smaller table first. This table describes how much each different type of piece is worth to our AI. If we want to save tokens, instead of putting all of these numbers into an array, we can simply combine them into one big hexadecimal number. To get the value of a single piece, we then simply shift and mask this bait number. This way, we replace an array consisting of a bunch of individual tokens by a single constant plus a bit of code to extract the values. For this small table, this saves 10 tokens, but we can do much better. Let's go back to these bigger tables. They contain additional values for having a piece in a specific position on the board. As an example, we would typically like to position our knights close to the middle of our board. To reflect this, we give bonus points in the center and minus points in the corners. We have eight such tables, one per piece type and two for pawns and kings, changing values between early game and end game. So the potential savings here are huge. First, we notice that we can combine these larger tables with a small piece value table. We do this by simply adding a piece's base value to the positional values. This way, we can entirely remove the smaller table that we just optimized. Second, we notice that these tables are symmetrical between left and right. Well, almost. The queen table is not quite symmetrical, but we make it symmetrical too. This allows us to store values for just one half of the board, halving the amount of data we need to store. Next, we use the same trick as before to combine a bunch of individual numbers into one large constant. Here we encode the eight values belonging to a single file into one large ulong constant. This way, we shrink a single table from 64 different constants to just four. And yes, we do have to add a little bit of code to take care of extracting the numbers, but together with a few other optimizations to the board evaluation code, this saves a whopping 978 tokens, taking us down to 2,075. From here on out, things start to move towards small optimizations, like turning function arguments into member variables, so we do not have to pass them along every time, or being strategic with our imports. I will point out one more thing specifically though, and that is the power of side effects. Here's an example I'm convinced you will absolutely hate. You probably have typed something like this iconic for loop about a million times in your life. But did you know that you can use one less token by combining the end condition and the increment into a single expression? Yes, this lets us save one whole single token. Here's a bigger example of this technique. An assignment in C-sharp can be used in the middle of an expression, and it returns the value that was just assigned. The common use case for this is to assign the same value to multiple variables at once, and this is pretty much uncontroversial. However, this absolutely is allowed in the middle of larger, more complex expressions too. If we take this to the extreme, we can combine this entire nested if condition into a single if. Isn't this both beautiful and disgusting at the same time? I don't know, but to me, writing terrible code like this gives a certain adolescent joy. Just don't pull these moves in your next PR at work. After hours of writing this marvelously ugly code, I was finally convinced that inlining this array length was the very last thing I was able to do to save tokens. So where do we land? 999 tokens, 25 to spare. So we would not have to painfully remove actual features from our AI after all. I contemplated using these 25 tokens for a small Easter egg, like adding this tiny piece of code that triggers whenever we're about to win. What does it do? Well, listen for yourself. And yes, this is perfectly within the rules of the competition. In the end, I was too concerned though that this would give Sebastian a heart attack. This is also a bit more than 25 tokens, so I would have to optimize something else, potentially at the cost of performance. So ultimately, I decided to leave this out. 999 is a pretty nice number, even though wasting 25 tokens hurts a little. Now all that was left was formatting my code nicely. So this is it, the destination of our journey, the code I submitted to the competition. And yes, it does look like this. I assure you it's perfectly valid C-sharp code, and it does work. And I don't know about you, but the notion that something can look like this, conveniently fit onto half a screen, and likely play chess better than I will ever do in my life, 
is just incredibly satisfying to me. So how will it do? I don't know, but my goal is being in the upper half of competitors, but who knows? I think I'll post a short update when the competition is over. You know, <laughs> subscribe and hit the bell to be notified. Until then, I put a link to my code into the video description. There's also a version of the code that is formatted slightly more traditionally, if you prefer that. At the remote possibility that you have written your own bot, I'd be incredibly happy to hear how it does against mine. Thank you for watching.